Across from the Isle of Mull, and nestled beyond Loch Aline, sits the Artonish estate. The estate plays host to an abundance of the majestic red deer. Josephine Pemberton, an evolutionary biologist based out of the University of Edinburgh, has based years of research on the subject of hybridisation. So the red deer is native to the whole of Europe and is our largest land mammal in the British Isles. And it's a large and graceful deer. Uh, in summer it has a gorgeous uh, chestnut red coat, um, very elegant appearance with long tapering ears. And uh, of course the males have large sweeping antlers with six or more points on them when they're adult. So a very beautiful animal, which uh, is much appreciated uh, in Scotland, certainly. Kenny McLaughlin is the assistant tourism manager for the estate has an extensive background in retail and hospitality. And after joining the Artornish estate team three years ago, he has been hands-on with both the tourism side of the estate and the environmental side. Um, oh, we've got one just up there. So I don't know if you can see, just up on the right hand side there on top of the hill, there's a stag up there, just, it's kind of standing just watching us at the moment. So we're quite fortunate on the estate that we don't have an issue presently with hybridisation. Um, the deer stock we have is 100% red deer. There are Sika deer within probably 50 miles of here. Um, to the north. At some point in the future they are going to keep coming down in this direction and we are then going to have um, hybridisation of all red deer in Scotland. It's going to happen in, in the next two, three decades. So hybridisation is when two species that have evolved separately uh, breed together, create offspring together, and if those offspring are fertile, there may be further crossing uh, with the parental types or with each other to create what we call an introgression situation where the genes from one species get into the other. Um, now we're talking here about the fact that um, a species called the Japanese seeker has been introduced to the British Isles. The issue is that having been introduced to various zoological collections, these animals have escaped into the wilds in Scotland and started to make hybrids with red deer, only at a very low frequency and only in some places, but uh, this is the thing that we're studying. Andy Foster is the head gamekeeper for the Scottish Deer Centre and he has a background of over 35 years within the care of red deer. At the Scottish Deer Centre we have uh, six Manchurian Sika deer. Uh, the ones that you normally find out in the wild are the Cervus Nippon which is the more common variety. Uh, these deer were gifted to Queen Victoria. Uh, they were held in probably insecure enclosures and managed to escape. Uh, we now have a problem out in the wild um, that's causing great concern with our red deer. Well, 
Come on, buddy. It's all right, son. Come on. Uh, our red deer have got a major problem with hybridisation with seeker deer. Approximately 75% of the red deer within Scotland have hybridised with uh, the seeker deer. This causes problems. Uh, the main problems is with their skeletal system where they get hip dysplasia and arthritis. The seeker deer is a smaller bodied deer with the red deer being a larger bodied deer. When you mix the two of them together, you're going to get major problems due to hybridisation. It also means that the genetic gene pool of the red deer becomes smaller and smaller. Within parks and zoos, we can breed some of that out, uh, but it means we need to get sort of some of the purer red deer within the parks and zoos to try and breed out the genetic problems. So one solution to the issue is to create an area where a uh, seeker cannot get to, and this has already been carried out in the, to the extent that most of the Hebridean islands that have got red deer on uh, are now in what's being called a red deer refuge and no deer may be introduced to those islands without uh, some checking, uh, presumably genetic checking, uh, before they get sent out there. Um, and it is going to have an impact on the quality and the size of the specimen beast that we, we have. Um, it won't affect, it won't have much of an effect from a sporting point of view um, because stalking will still be the same, we'll still be out in this kind of area, but they're going to be a smaller beast. People will look at a prime red deer stag, whether it be a 12, 14 pointer, 16 pointer in the future, it won't be the same standard or the same size of a specimen as they are right now. What we were smoking earlier on about hybridisation, I don't personally see a, a solution, um, I don't see an outcome other than there is going to be a mix of seeker and red deer in the years to come. You can't, when you look at this, this is where the, the deer live, we can't fence them in completely, they're always going to move from area to area um, and I don't, I don't see, as I said earlier on, a point in the next 20, 30, 40 years even, where we're going to have purebred red deer still in this area of the highlands. In fact, in any of the, any area of the, the highlands it's got, on some of the remote islands possibly there will still be some, but in these areas I personally don't, I don't see an, a, a solution to, the, to that problem. As a population, we must now ask ourselves, if we do not intervene and fix the errors of previous generations, are we willing to risk losing another indigenous animal through hybridisation? <laughs>